Today is Sunday, October 11th, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the clouds of shade. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people Will he, he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. A reading from Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made to, known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about those things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the Lord of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. 
while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have another challenging parable before us today uh, that Jesus gives, again, to the same uh, crowd uh, that he's been talking to for the past couple of weeks. So this is, again, um, in, in the temple, and it is the, the crowd that's gathered around him, plus the, the, um, uh, the Pharisees and the, the, the high priests who've come out to, to talk to him that we heard about several weeks ago. Um, part of what I want to say is, I mean, there are, there are some very confusing things in this parable, and, and it makes it challenging for us to figure out what's going on. But I, I want to go back and begin by saying there, there are a couple of things that, um, that we know, you know we ought not to do, and that, again, is to understand um, that those high priests and, and the Pharisees that have come out are not enemies of the gospel. They're not enemies of Jesus. There may be a disagreement between Jesus and them about, uh, I, I would say, the, the future of the people of God. Uh, of of Judaism of uh, probably what we would call post temple Judaism, um, the temple's there in the story, but when when this is recorded, it's not. Uh, there there may be a disagreement about how things are supposed to proceed, but they are not the enemy. So, uh, we may be tempted to read this parable as allegorical, and at one level that might be okay but it depends on how we use the allegory. Uh, we are not being given permission in this allegory to say that Christianity is replacing Israel, for example. Um, but what are we supposed to do? Uh, and there is, is the challenge. So there's a couple of things I want to highlight. One is... There are different kinds of people in the beginning of the parable who refuse the initial invitation. Only one of those is kind of portrayed as really problematic. The others are described as making light of the invitation. There's one group that's described as problematic, and that's the one who who kills the the um, the people who are sent out by the king. Those are the ones that seem to receive some sort of, of punishment. Um, again, I, I don't want us to make too much of that, but I want us to understand that that's the category. It's not everybody who rejected are having troops sent by them, uh, are, are sent to them. But just the ones who actively sought to limit the message. I think it should also be pointed out that when uh, the the king sends his slaves back out to, to re-invite new people to fill up the banquet hall, that everybody's invited, both the good and the bad, the text says. Again, this kind of fits into the overall arc of the parables that we've been hearing since all of this began, and that is there will be unexpected people 
who are being gathered by God um, in in God's community among the people of God. There will be the, the people that you do not expect. It will be both the good and the bad. And then there's, for me, what's really kind of uh, the, the place where I'm stuck is where there's the one guy who's there without a robe on. So um, they, they, they did not come to the banquet appropriately attired. Um, the one guy, and that one guy is thrown out. Uh, and then Jesus gives a pretty graphic description of where they're thrown out, the place where there is wailing and gnashing of teeth. And then, curiously, uh, uh, that after Jesus talks about this one guy being thrown into the outer darkness, I mean, clearly it's, it's kind of a allegorical, metaphorical, spiritual description of where the, the person is headed. Jesus follows that up by saying, for many are called, but few are chosen. And it's just, it's like the one guy? Or does this mean um, that there was a wide invita invitation set out, but it's only that second crowd, the second uh, group of people that are invited? It's very confusing what that means when it's followed up. Uh, that way, where many, many are called, few are chosen. It's only one guy who gets thrown out. Um, but, and, and then even if you count the second group, the banquet hall is still full. So it's very strange. And usually when things are odd, that's a flag to pay attention to that. Cause that may have something to do with this, um, the meaning. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know exactly what it is. Although I suspect that the one person who shows up unprepared, if we think about this as an allegory, is the one person who showed up who is not, who's not a person. I, th I think it is uh, all those things which have arrayed themselves spiritually against God. Uh, we're not talking about people. We're talking about um, spiritualities or maybe even opinions. Because if you look through the entire Gospel of Matthew, the thing that upsets Jesus is when there is um, religious authority, not so much of the people, but the authority in general, or concepts, or however you want to put it, spirits who are saying that uh, we ought to involve more restrictive, oppressive ways of being the people of God that leave certain groups out and other groups in. Of the ideas that lead people away from that, that Isaiah vision of the feast that all are coming to, to say, well, no, there are only certain people who come in. And and then we have we have them kind of embodied in the in the last half of that first group, the other people who are just not paying attention to what's going on, and then everyone, both good and bad, get invited. The people who are good and bad get invited into the feast, and that one thing that I think is ushered out of that banquet is death. And all the ways, all the little deaths bound up in the, that image of that person are escorted out. This will be a feast of life, not one of uh, separation, not one of, of powers and authorities that try to tell us um, within our, our lives that we don't measure up. That, I believe is what is escorted out. Um, many are called, few are chosen. I'll be honest, I still don't know how that fits with the ending. But I do think that might be a call for us to, 
to pay attention to what we have been invited into, that we participate uh, in as the people of God in ways that give life and not get seduced uh, by those things that lead to to death, whether literal death or or just emotional spiritual death. Uh, that that we pay attention to what is inviting us into participation and and to pay attention to God, to that which gives life, uh, because God will be present in those things. That is what I think this parable in the overall context of Matthew is inviting us to do, um, to embody the gospel in our own lives, to know that we have been invited in and I would say that the good news is if we're worried about what we're wearing, whether it's literal or metaphorical, into this banquet hall, to know that, that you and I, as the baptized people of God, we're already wearing the right gown. Now we're invited to be aware that we have been clothed with God's grace and to live into that the way that God is calling us to do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all the people according to their needs. Gracious God, Fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table for boundless grace. We remember our Bishop Elizabeth and Patricia, our Director of Evangelical Mission, William, all the Synod staff, our Dean Regina, and all the pastors and deacons of your church. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Gracious host, as, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of dipl diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who negative conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, let your Gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearances, remind us how your cloth is all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who in life-sustaining fields must continue to work during this time, such as those in health care, teachers, those who make deliveries, stock shelves, run registers, and prepare food, among others, protect them, encourage them, and grant them peace, clear minds, and rest. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, we remember our ministry and community partners. By my side, Lutheran Settlement House, United Lutheran Seminary, Fishing and Sea, Chamber Music, SOL Collective Project, Safe, The Simple Way, More Voice Studios, and all those things for which we are preparing us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now those prayers of concern, of thanksgiving, which we now lift before us. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to offer this prayer. 
Most merciful Lord, we grieve that we cannot all assemble to hear your word and receive your supper. We experience the weight of separation and we long for conversation and consolation gathered as one body in you. Yet, O Lord Jesus, remind us of the bold and beautifully audacious woman who also could not touch your body, but dared in faith to grab hold of the hem of your garment that she would be healed. Grant to us such boldness of faith when we too may not take hold of your body and blood that we might, like her, cling to the hem of your garment and receive the grace of your healing. Deliver us from pestilence, sorrow, and hardship. Protect those who must put themselves at risk during this time. In this wilderness, teach us to be your people and bring us again to your table so that we may not only touch your hem, but commune with you. Shape us through this experience to better embody being your people for the sake of the world. Renew and restore us, O Christ, for you live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Now. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.